Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Vartuk-106. Last time on the Bard's podcast, the group saved the archives and put every gray cloak to the sword. While some members of the party were not wholly in favor of the action, the legitimate concern of being followed or word getting out could not be disputed. As the sun began to set, the party rode off into silence. We rejoined them as the setting sun casts an orange glow on a large expanse of water. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Katorian Coast, beamed a happy bulger the gnome. The others looked out across the water and appeared to be non-committal about their new surroundings. Well, try to contain your excitement, why don't you? scoffed the former sailor. The others shrugged their shoulders and Fargus spoke up next, pointing out that he saw a whole lot of water, but no boats. How exactly are we going to sail to Phoenix without a ship? Bulger explained that the port city of Haddonfield was across the bay and they would have to make the journey around the water. Cabe and Sister Elaine began to set up the adventurer's tent while Lady Irena looked out over the expanse. Her elven eyesight allowed her to pick up details at a further distance than the others. She nodded her head. Pointing out that the northern passage was nothing more than open sea, she confirmed the smoke rising across the bay. The amount is consistent with a larger community. There is even a soft glow indicating the possibility of a lighthouse? Bulger laughed and shook his head, complimenting the woman on her vision. He confirmed that the city was several several thousand people the last time he was there, and there was an ornate lighthouse guiding ships safely into the harbor. Fargus dragged out the food prepared by Mama Rockfist as the others get were getting the tent squared away. Once completed, they all marveled as to the camouflage effect the item possessed. Memories of the merchant and the usefulness against the bandits flooded back to their minds. After the speechless evening meal, the group each contemplated the activity from earlier and formulated their own opinions. Each noticed that while Cabe Silvertongue was quiet, he seemed to be at peace. As they all turned in, the bard inquired if he could skip the first watch as he was quite tired. The others pointed out that they would handle the watch and he could rest. Fargus took first watch, with Lady Irena taking the middle, and Bulger dealing with the dawn as he remarked he always enjoyed a nice sunrise over the ocean. Fargus stepped outside and kept an unlit torch close by while the others entered the tent and laid down for some much needed rest. The night passed uneventfully with Lady Irena taking extra watch time as Bulger seemed exceptionally tired. She woke him before daybreak and he thanked her for the extra rest as he was still sore from the fighting. The group broke their fast and each nibbled on the remaining food from the dwarven mother before packing up to circle around the bay. Thirty minutes into the ride, Cabe and Lady Irena halted their horses and listened. The column stalled and the others waited for news of the delay. The mage and bard both pointed out that they had heard a disruption, like rocks being tossed into the water just ahead. Lady Irena added that she also heard wood snapping as well. The group readied their weapons and moved forward cautiously. After nearly 15 minutes, they had still not located the noise until they found an earthen ramp leading down the cliff to the coast. Just ahead of the group on the beach were a pair of large giants dragging a broken ship ashore. Grunting and heaving from the difficulty, the pair did not notice the party as they remained hidden in some foliage. Fargus and Lady Irena relayed to the rest what they observed and a concerned bulger asked about sailors. Fargus pointed out that none were seen but corrected himself as a body washed ashore. The news immediately caused bulger to flush with anger and spur his pony ahead of the group past Fargus and Lady Irena, who were both unable to stop him. A gnomish war cry escaped the former sailor as he charged across the sand towards the waterline where the giants just finished breaching the small vessel. Rolling their eyes, the ranger and mage joined in the chase with the cleric and bard close behind. As the mounts thundered across the sand, 
Bulger crashed his pony directly into one of the giant's knees, causing him to topple over. The collision knocked the pony sideways and flung the gnome into the surf. Lady Irena pulled up her mount and began to cast web and aimed for one of the giant's hands. With the other three closing, Sister Elaine went to the aid of Bulger and the ranger and bard headed for the other. The broken vessel was secured as it was stuck in the sand and Fargus and Cabe closed for combat. Standing between the giant and his club, the pair attempted to fend off the enormous creature as best they could. The other giant pulled his hands apart, causing the web strands to fracture immediately and allowed the creature to send a fist, smashing into the sand with Sister Elaine narrowly jumping out of the way. She cracked the creature in the elbow with her magical mace, causing a bellow of pain to escape the creature's lips. Bolger had been able to recover quickly from the water landing and smashed the ankle of the creature, causing him to fall over into the broken ship, intensifying the damage exponentially. On the other side of the vessel, the party, both Cabe and Fargus, were doing their best from letting the creature recover its weapon and had slashed its hands several times, spraying blood onto both. Lady Irena fired off two magic missiles at the one facing off with Elaine and Bulger, and a third at the one the boys were fighting. The magic struck true and caused both giants to wince in pain. The one, stuck in the ship, swung out of its enormous palm and sent the cleric skidding across the sandy beach before kicking Bulger back into the water. The giant then rose to its feet and began to wade out to deeper waters away from its assailants. On the left side of the beach ship, Fargus and Cabe had inflicted enough damage to cause the giant to retreat into the water as well. With both large humanoids far out enough, they began to move further down the beach to avoid the confrontation. A soaked Bulger and a bruised Sister Elaine hobbled down the beach and rejoined their compatriots. Lady Arena fired off a few more missiles that were designed to fall short, but kept the giants moving away from the party. Cabe helped Bulger breathe by smacking him on the back to expel water. Once both were fine, they looked up to see the trio staring at them with angry looks on their faces. Bulger noticed and asked what their issue was, which caused Lady Irena to throw up her hands and stomp off. Sister Elaine tended to her wounds and shook her head, while Fargus buried his blade in the sand and put his hands on his hips. Two days! Two reckless actions! Are you guys trying to get us all killed? blurted out the angry ranger. Both individuals attempted to defend their actions, but it was clear that Fargus had had enough. He verbally berated both of them and told them that he didn't care if they were both on suicide missions, he just didn't want to go down with them. These one-sided actions have to stop before they get us all killed. Cabe and Bulger stood on the sand as Fargus grabbed his blade and went to retrieve their mounts that were galloping along the surf. The pair stood next to each other and watched as their compatriots huffed around the beach. Bulger turned to the half-elf and stated that the blame was his. Bulger looked to him and nodded. Yes, today it was your fault. Yesterday was clearly mine. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.